Alafia. I'm Dr. Gloria Lattimore Peace, host and co-host. I have to. I, every time I have one of my <laughs> my errant co-hosts show up, my absentee co-hosts show up. I have to remember that I actually do have co-hosts for this show, but of course they are very busy people, and so I have to be the anchor person. But today I have a co-host in this in this. Uh, studio and I have to introduce her and let her smile at you. You haven't seen her in a very long time. Her <laughs> name is Johari Cole and I'm going to introduce her as Dr. Johari Cole mm. and that's because in a minute she's going to have a doctorate and I know because she really is already qualified to hold one. It's just that she has not gone through the little you know ritual of have the class, write the paper, tell the little people I know this stuff and let the little people, you know, put a little stamp on a little piece of paper. But uh, uh, I'd hear in W, Dr. Johari Cole, may you here and after be so addressed. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and a welcome addition, too. I okay. love it. And then I have Dr. Laila Africa. And we yeah. entitle the show African mm -hmm. Holistic Health because that's what we want to talk about. Oh, that's good. And we want to talk about it, not just because you wrote a book about it. How long ago did you first start writing on the subject of African holistic oh, health? Oh, it's been well over 20 years now. 20 years you've been writing on the same subject? And, and enhancing subject. it and updating it and delving deeper into it. And 20 years I have used this as my Bible, have recommended it to everybody I can see because I think everyone should have a copy of this book in their homes. And I'm sure it's available in libraries. I know they won't let me say that it's available at any particular bookstore, but there are bookstores in your neighborhood that have this book. And if you don't find it in your bookstore, then give us a call. We'll tell you where it is. We'll also tell you where he is. Right now, he's not. He's in Chicago, but he's not a native of Chicago. And that's why I feel so lucky. Oh, yes, so South Carolina. <laughs> okay, so, he, you know, he knows a lot of stuff. He has the book called African Holistic Health, and then he also has another book called Nutricide, and I named this book. You certainly did. I named this book because we were thinking about people who commit suicide mm -hmm. with what they eat yeah. and what they don't eat as well, and he had all the content. I just had the concept. <laughs> so we agree that this is what sh the title of this book should be, and it is, and I'm going to look in the back of the book and see if my name is in it. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I want my royalties. It's in there. You get your props. <laughs> okay, but you know, I am very happy to have you in the studio, Dr. Africa, and you okay. too, Johari, you. because we can have a very good conversation about this whole concept of African and holistic because I maintain that African and holistic are the same thing. That's right. And, you know, folks want to say holistic as a way of not having to say that this is African-based, mm -hmm. that its source is African. And this is not alternative medicine. This is the real thing. Right. This is the original medicine. That's right. This is the original healing arts that our people use from time immemorial mm -hmm. up yes. until now. And we are losing our grip on even the home remedies that we used to know. Exactly. Increasingly, we are, we are at the mercy of corporate America when it comes to taking care of ourselves. And I want to say this, and then I want to hear what you're going to tell me. I want to say that I have found, that, found the, the, the following two things very strange that you can go to one of the most prolific drugstore chains, you cannot buy an enema bag. Interesting. You cannot buy a douche bag. They will send you to the home health care people who sell wheelchairs and other kinds of, of uh, equipment mm -hmm. for people who are seriously ill to buy things that you used to be able to get just in your local drugstore. So I'm saying to myself, things are disappearing, things that we used to take for granted. You used to be able to buy goose grease right. to rub on the chest that. to break up coagulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you, who can find that anymore? Mm -hmm. So increasingly things that we could go and pick up that were 
inexpensive, effective, natural, and that got the job done are not available to us. And we need to know that, and we need to know that we have to take greater responsibility for caring for ourselves. So who wants to say some more about that? You can start right off uh, on that. <laughs> well, the thing with uh, holistic health, which is the treatment of the spirit and mind and body, and the Europeans say body, mind, spirit, but we say spirit, mind, and body. Uh, the whole area of understanding your health and understanding what to eat is culturally based. It's mm -hmm. essentially that. Mm -hmm. Science is basically a language of a culture. Even if you bring someone like a Chinese person comes to America or Japanese, if they come here, they can't eat the food unless they bring their own food over here because they have to see their culture on the plate mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. attach themselves to this thing called a diet. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, they have to see their culture, so we should see our culture mm -hmm. on, in, uh, as, on that plate of food. Mm -hmm. We see Italian, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we see everybody right. else's but mm -hmm. our own, mm -hmm. and we're not connected to the food from a culture perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the damaging things about it because your culture defines what health is about. Mm -hmm. to, to be healthy in the African sense is to be just what, what you eat, balanced with what you eat, mm -hmm. know that reciprocity exists, you, you, what, you, what you put in, you get out. Mm -hmm. So we look for mod mm -hmm. to define what is health for us and what is a diet for us because mm -hmm. we don't want to harm nature. We want to be in balance with nature. So we're right. always applying this principle we call ma'at because mm -hmm. that's the language of our culture. Mm -hmm. So we can't see our culture in the food, so we eat any kind of food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's very dangerous, mm -hmm. very dangerous. Well, for one thing, we are in the process of being deculturized. Yes. The culture, the African culture, when we used to resent it when they said that we were culturally deprived because yes. when they said that, what they actually meant was that we were being deprived of exposure to the museums and to the institutes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the opera, the theater, and all of the things <laughs> European. But actually, what was happening was we were being deprived of African culture, yes. exactly. knowledge yes. of self, yes. and knowing what is natural to us, knowing mm -hmm. what our natural diet ought to be, mm -hmm. knowing what our natural way of life ought to be. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, we kept trying to get culturally enriched by, in, by participating more and introducing our children more to European culture exactly. rather than filling in the void that was being created in our own culture. Mm -hmm. Now, I've read recently uh, an author who's writing about the McDonaldization of America. I've read another book called Fast Food Nation mm -hmm. in which they are talking about the way of life is being determined by corporations because they have a formula for the diet mm -hmm. and it consists of having fun, of having a formula in which you, you can expect the same product no matter where you are on the, on the planet. Right. You go there, you get the same hamburger, the same fries, and on, not only that, you'll get toys for the children mm -hmm. and it's an altogether joyous occasion. On the other side of that, of course, is the control of the people and the culture mm -hmm. and the growing problem of obesity. Right. I wanted to add, interject there with um, when you were talking about how we're missing our, our culture. And I read recently where um, a, lot of the, um, a lot of boys, the lost boys, that were um, part of the famine in, in, that was going on in Uganda mm -hmm. and the war-torn areas of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a lot of orphans that have been running um, without, you know, without any kind of, uh, of uh, support network and mm -hmm. they've been running called Lost Boys mm -hmm. and there, there are several organizations bringing uh, these African young men over to this country mm -hmm. and they're putting them in places like North Dakota where there's not one other person of color mm -hmm. in a, a, you know, a very, very wide radius. Mm -hmm. and, and they're putting it, and there's, so a lot of our African brothers and sisters are, are meeting with culture shock. Mm -hmm. And it just illed me when I, when I read it. It was a, why won't they uh, put them in places where other people of color are? You didn't ask that question. I sure did. Because you know the question. answer. Yeah, I know, but I had to ask that anyway. Okay. And, um, 
And it, it just it, it just bewildered me, you know, that they would put them in these very, very cold environments. Mm -hmm. Away from, I mean, just devoid of culture mm -hmm. altogether, mm -hmm. and force them to, you know, sustain themselves on American diet. And a lot of them were getting sick because of the diet that they were being, you know, forced to eat. Mm -hmm. A lot of the high carbohydrates here, mm -hmm. and a lot of the fast food, processed foods, mm -hmm. which they they had no clue mm -hmm. of what a lot of it was. And so when you mentioned that. I was like, that's a perfect example, mm -hmm. you know, of us being devoid of our, seeing our food uh, being, de you know, void of culture yeah. and uh, what we're being faced with. That's a whole, continuation, yeah. though, of the chattel slave experience. Mm -hmm. You think when we were brought here as chattel, do you think that they bothered to try to have us be united with one another and families? What they did always was to separate, separate us. Divide, we, they it. separated us before yes. they put us on slave ships. Mm -hmm. They separated us when they put us on the auction block. And if by chance you formed any kind of alliance on a plantation, the, they would separate you again yeah. because they did not want to encourage unity and family mm -hmm. and all those kinds of nurturing things that mm -hmm. help people restore themselves. Okay. So, Dr. Africa, what I like so much about African Holistic Health was that you didn't confine yourself to just health. In other words, you just exactly. didn't go through and talk about disease and cures and 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 uh, that all of all of that without talking about how, in the first place. We came to have these problems, these plagues. You went back into European history when they went to Africa looking for medicine because they were sick in Europe. In Europe, they had all sorts of plagues. We know about some of them, the bubonic plague probably mm -hmm. being the most famous. They had famines and plagues having to do with poor hygiene bad nutrition and a lot of other uh, things, they went to Africa mm -hmm. to look for herbs. This is part of the reason why we were uprooted from Africa, because there we were in the Garden of Eden yeah, with the all show. the things that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. And because they were ill-mannered and uncivil, they came in and rather than barter and trade, they came in for conquest to take away the land from the people mm -hmm. and therefore you know be able to control everything the people and the land right. Dr. Africa well they uh, see I, I don't want to be labeled a point but they they were ahead of famines and Europeans the Caucasians they had famines and ice ages and frozen land and had a shortage of food mm -hmm. so they would go about stealing food from each other they would mm -hmm. go about snatching food mm -hmm. and that's where you get the word snack food from because mm -hmm. they still identifying culture with food mm -hmm. they can't visualize food unless they have stolen it so they still call it snack food mm -hmm. which means snatching food mm -hmm. But the thing that hits you when you go into this kind of looking at the body thing, which I had to do with the biology and the chemistry and all these languages mm -hmm. that are tied to white supremacy, the, the uh, terms we use kind of throws you into that culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The mythology, the names of the muscles and things of that sort, like we have uh, the biceps and we have the triceps and in, in medicine, seps mean head. Mm -hmm. and we have, I'll just give you one example. Say uh, we have the small and large intestines, mm -hmm. and they come together, and they have a little valve there so the food won't Go back, back, back up. Mm -hmm. And that valve is called the ileocecal valve, mm -hmm. named after Ileos, who was Hercules' brother. Mm -hmm. okay. You see? And Ileos killed the three-headed crab monster so Hercules could get through the swamp. Okay. to meet his challenge. So mm -hmm. we go through the ileocecal valve, ileos, in the watery swamp of your small intestines, okay. large intestines, mm -hmm. okay. kill the bicep, tricep, three-headed crab monster okay. called Hydra, mm -hmm. All right. who lived in the swamp, and Hydra means water. Okay. Right. You see? Mm -hmm. So we, we enter this, and in the, in the, he trapped the crab monster in the deltoid, Mm -hmm. Trapezoid, trap the crab monster mm -hmm. in the deltoid mm -hmm. swamp. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you're studying biology and chemistry, you're just studying culture, but we don't yes. see culture. Mm -hmm. We think it's some scientific term. Mm -hmm. So when, I'm, when I used to sit in those classrooms and get culture abrasion, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I say, oh, wait a minute, I've heard this word before, ileos, I've heard mm -hmm. this word before, biceps, I've mm -hmm. heard obiquilus before, and then mm -hmm. I said, oh, I see what they're doing here. Mm -hmm. They're attaching their culture to the body so mm -hmm. they can understand the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I said, this language, the whole thing is cultural, like the exactly. seasoning that was done with the, the boys that, uh, in U Uganda that in right. America. Mm -hmm. They're seasoning them mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. castrate them, to send them back to us, to poison us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're becoming agents of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. it's the same process over and over again. But nonetheless, when we're eating, we don't really look at the food and say, look, this is a matter of life and death. Mm -hmm. We attach rituals and ceremonies to it, the songs mm -hmm. and the dancing of make doo doo, mm -hmm. you know. So those, are, those are rituals and ceremonies that they're attaching to the food. Mm -hmm. And they're also bringing this family thing where the whole family is there. Mm -hmm. So they're attaching family, mm -hmm. fun, rituals, dancing, songs. That's why children mm -hmm. like commercials, because mm -hmm. they're miniature rituals and ceremonies. Mm -hmm. exactly. So they attach all of this to the food, and that gets us into it. Mm -hmm. You see, it's still culture, but mm -hmm. we don't see it as culture. Mm -hmm. right. But uh, to, to understand things, you have to attach people to everything. Mm -hmm. People is behind chemistry. Mm -hmm. When I use a, like we have a, I use a conductivity meter. I don't want to get too, in this jargon I learned in school. But I measure the electrolytes in food, how much mm -hmm. energy this food has. Mm -hmm. And I have a machine, I pour the juice from carrots in it, or I pour urine in it and measure how much energy is in this, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. liquid. Mm -hmm. And so the, the machine tells me what's going on. It mm -hmm. gives me a reading like a, you, know, you look at a scale. It gives mm -hmm. me some numbers. I say, okay, this is how many electrolytes is in this scale. water. Mm -hmm. How many electrolytes are uh, minerals that carry electrical charge. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too far. Mm -hmm. So I, the machine looks scientific, but, I look, but the machine has to be what we call calibrated. Mm -hmm. Someone has to decide <laughs> what is an inch, mm -hmm. what is 16 inches, 32 mm -hmm. seconds. Mm -hmm. So when you, how it's calibrated is based on the rituals and ceremonies of the Greeks and the Romans. Mm -hmm. So we back to culture again. It's not a machine. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's European culture oh, okay. in another form. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like you go into the, the African drum language, which this white boy stole it and called it the Morris Code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They took that same pulsation and rhythm, and now they call it the telephone. Mm -hmm. They took the same pulsation and rhythm, and now they call it a computer, computer. Mm -hmm. which is nothing but an African drum. Mm -hmm. But if you don't attach people to the computer, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I do is I go back and I attach people to everything, to mm -hmm. food, to the, when we look at a plate. The Europeans used to eat off this square thing, a little, little square piece of wood. Mm -hmm. So they, when you ate off that square piece of wood, you were eating really good. So they said that was a square meal. Oh, you know. there you <laughs> go. Okay. Yeah. So, so we came along, we said, no, we're talking about the sun god, Ra. So we came with a round plate. Mm -hmm. Symbolize spirituality. All right. Uh -huh. so, you see? Mm -hmm. so we look at it. The knife was the first thing they had. And mm -hmm. Then the fork came. And mm -hmm. the, four, the four prongs on the fork is what we call Isis, Osiris, and Nephthys. Mm -hmm. We're getting into a whole lot of mythology here. Mm -hmm. So you, the Europeans are the only culture that put a knife close to the plate. Of all cultures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. of the, they eat and they defend themselves with the, the knife. Okay, in you case see? you try to snatch. <laughs> yeah, in case you try to snatch the food. Okay. <laughs> snack okay. food. Okay. So okay. the whole thing is to, we have to say that I'm eating because I'm trying to bless my temple. Because mm -hmm. eating is a, a, a form of worshiping. Mm -hmm. It's a form of communion with God. Exactly. And you don't want to do anything to hurt your holy temple. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have to go back and attach spirituality to things like we used to. Like mm -hmm. the, if, even if we were doing something in the kitchen, you drop the fork, we say, oh, do, oh Lord. Mm -hmm. We immediately <laughs> attach spirituality mm -hmm. to things. Mm -hmm. that's, that's being African. Mm -hmm. It's not the language. It's not mm -hmm. the clothes. It's, mm -hmm. it's attaching spirituality exactly. to things. Mm -hmm. So we have to go back and say, this is a, this is a body, but it's also spiritual. Mm -hmm. This is food, but it's made by God, and God's a spirit, and therefore this is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And then we start attaching our culture back to the food. Mm -hmm. That's why we used to pray and say grace, as we call it, because mm -hmm. we were attaching spirituality to things. Right. But McDonald's doesn't show no prayers on those commercials. You notice right. that. Mm -hmm. right. None of them do that. McDoodoo or the Burping King, none mm -hmm. of those. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't attach spirituality to things, and mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of like culturally castrating us again. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we have to go back and start being African, which is attaching God to our behavior and how we eat. And we have to say prayers before we have sex, because sex is a spiritual activity. Mm -hmm. We have to attach God. If God isn't in the bedroom with us, then mm -hmm. the devil's in there with us. Well, you know mm -hmm. what comes from that kind of union. Uh, you, you, oh, well, I'm not going to go to yeah. Whoopi Goldberg. I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs>
South Africa. Yeah. I know um, I first got in, indoctrinated to the, your term of McDoodoo. <laughs> 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 and um, a couple of years ago, and uh, you were talking, and I said the McDoodoo scare. Now, <laughs> and since then, my, my daughter, that's what she calls it every time she sees those golden arches. <laughs> but <laughs> now, but um, anyway, the question I had was, um, as far as the fast food, do you believe that there is an addiction? A chemical addiction that um, that's being out connected, or that we have an affinity. People have an affinity toward these fast foods more so than any other processed foods. Or yeah, they they're highly chemicalized. Mm -hmm. They have the, the oranges, the, the collard greens, the spinach. The potatoes have hormones in it to make them grow faster. Mm -hmm. They have sex hormones in it, so it also occurs with the sexual addiction. Mm -hmm. Then they have steroids in it. Mm -hmm as well as in the meat and eggs and, and uh, dairy products. All of mm -hmm. them have sex hormones and steroids, so you get these eight, nine-year girls with big breasts and mm -hmm. menstruating in elementary school. And boys right. with breasts. And boys with breasts and having gender confusion problems because mm -hmm. that goes with the steroids and the sex hormones in the food along with the chemical addiction of the sugar, which mm -hmm. they put in everything. Mm -hmm. The sugar is the king of all drugs. Mm -hmm. They put that in everything to disguise the off flavors of the chemicals because it at least kind of... They don't want you to chew and spar off this gland called a parotid gland. They mm -hmm. want you to just use these glands on your tongue mm -hmm. so you just get a little, you don't get the full flavor. But mm -hmm. if you chew long enough, mm -hmm. this gland will fire off, which also stimulates your thymus gland, which mm -hmm. people associate with defending their body from AIDS. Mm -hmm. So if you're chewing, you're also improving your immunity. Mm -hmm. But the objective is for you to chew just a few times so you won't taste some off flavors from the chemicals. Mm -hmm. So they put sugar in there or salt. Mm -hmm. Well, flavoring is an industry now. I'm oh, reading in yes. the book called yeah. Fast Food Nation. Yes. You know, the yeah. whole idea is, you know, you can, uh, there is a petroleum-based, uh, what is that, P TV TVP? TVP? Yeah, that's right. From petroleum. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So worse. that you can take <laughs> almost anything, yeah. you yeah. know, sawdust. Yeah, they put sawdust and give in it a flavor. And Pringles. Mm. That's you know? in Pringles. They put wood in Pringles. They also feed cattle with plastic straw. I mean, it's, it's no limit to their limit mm -hmm. because it's no, uh, no what we call morality right. in theirs. Mm -hmm. There's no Check God balance. center. But there. see, when you, when, you, when you say attaching spirituality to the act of eating, you know, the sacredness, right. the yes. people are eating on the fly, they're eating on the run, they're driving down the street, you know, they're talking on the phone. People don't dine anymore. They don't come and sit down mm -hmm. and consume a meal right. slowly and deliberately with reverence that they are even able to do this. I mean, people say, well, since 9-11, you know, I realize how transient life is. <laughs> I realize, you know, how uh, blessed I am and so forth and so on. Did you have to have 9-11 to know that there are people in the world who are starving? Yes. And you have more than enough to eat. And you don't even want to take time out to be thankful for the blessing of living indoors, eating food, having your body covered from the elements, you know, just ordinary basic things that mm -hmm. you have. You don't even want to. You don't want to pause to notice all these blessings that right. you know ought to weigh you down. Right. If you mm -hmm. stop to count them, mm -hmm. you ought to just be. You know, my Lord, I have too, so many blessings. I don't know okay. what to do. <laughs> you know, so why would you rush through a meal, especially if the the nurturer in the household has taken the time to prepare it? You know, That's right. and you know, how is it that people look at the language again? You 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 brought it up. Somebody says to you, "I threw it on the grill. I threw it in the microwave. Mm -hmm. I grabbed a bag of of chicken on my way in. I, I grabbed <laughs> a bucket it. of chicken." You know, <laughs> yeah. how in the world? Why would you want somebody to give you something to eat that they threw somewhere? <laughs> that they didn't even care enough Get about no it to prepare no it. Right? Yeah. You know, right. you want your food prepared because you want your body to receive something exactly. that has some value. You don't want angry people who are working for minimum wage. 
you know, back in the, you know, in the kitchen, overworked, underpaid, and with an attitude. That, I think, will have find its way into whatever that is that you're being served. Yeah. And so the whole idea of having people prepare meals, of having families sit down together and dine, mm -hmm. and therefore being able to assimilate that which is eaten because you're not wolfing it down. Right. Your mind isn't someplace else, mm -hmm. you know. We don't treat that as sacred. In my day, people were demanded, you were demanded to be home at dinner time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had to come home and eat your dinner. Now, you, if you were older, you might be allowed to go back out. But you had to come home, and your father expected to see everybody mm -hmm. at dinner time. You know, and if you started not showing up at dinner time, then everybody was going to be on your case. But now kids come and go pretty much as they will. They pretty much spend their time the way they want to. They can spend it with their video games. They can spend it right. in front of their television sets. They don't have to interact with their family members at all. And they don't have to take their meals at any particular time. They can, somebody can toss them mm -hmm. one of those bars of mm -hmm. something on their way out. You oh, know, they didn't put cereal and right. milk in a bar. Yeah. So you, yeah. somebody can yeah. throw you one across the room. You can grab it. And yeah. grab it and yeah. snatch and keep it. On, yeah. yeah, you can yeah. snatch it out of the air yeah. and keep right on moving. Right. I know my daughter has, uh, she had me feeling very guilty. I, I guess I, I have been guilty a couple of times, you know, being real busy and saying, oh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, we're just going to have popcorn for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or if I, you know, I'm out of town and, you know, it's her and her dad and they're running around and, and she'll look at me with this guilty face. Mom, I haven't had a real meal mm -hmm. in a few days now. And she knows what I a real meal is. a real is. meal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want something mm -hmm. to eat, Mom. Mm -hmm. not, not something frozen out of a box. <laughs> I'm not trying to say this in your defense, but I know that you are the world's greatest cook. Oh, you know, you. I have used your catering services. I know. I mean, you are creative, you, and your food is nutritious. It is beautifully presented. You are very excellent at what you do. So I know that your daughter knows what a real meal is. Real meal. And so when you're okay. trying to offer her some popcorn, I know right, she thinks right. you have lost your mind. <laughs> I've gone crazy. But what about fasting? You know, people think, True. you know, I don't know if children ought to be doing it, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. people think that I haven't eaten anything. That's some kind of disaster. Yeah. What about wrong. not eating? What about having specific times when you just let the body rest and exactly. process all the stuff you've been shoving in <laughs> for months? Right. Well, you, you talk know, about you, that? you're talking about some logic here, but people are emotionally attached to food. They eat food because they're having problems. They mm -hmm. eat sugar because they have the inability to give love or receive love because mm -hmm. sugar is associated with love. Mm. Is that right? Yes. Mm. So why did you know that, Sweetness. Dr. Africa? And salt is associated with anger. Mm. And black people eat the most salted potato chips of any racial group in America because okay. they're angry. Okay. And we what about this hot sauce thing I see? <laughs> We do have a hot sauce problem. Now, yeah. We're going into hot sauce, and you're also going in for vinegar. Because yeah. oh, vinegar yeah. comes with the hot sauce, and vinegar is a chemical that's made from eating meat. People get addicted to the chemicals they take and the chemicals they make inside of their body. Mm. Okay. That's two addictions. Okay. The chemicals you take and the chemicals you make. Mm. Okay. So when you're eating a lot of meat, you're making a lot of vinegar, okay. as well as ammonia. Okay. You see, that's, that's a chemical addiction, so they're going to thrive for that. Okay. The, the hot sauce in their mind is trying to drive them, stimulate them to, to have more money or more lottery tickets or something. It's a cycle. <laughs> it's an emotional attachment to mm -hmm. the food that we have. I've seen people who wouldn't start a meal without have have locating the hot sauce. Yeah, because they're trying to, Where is they're the trying hot to sauce? stimulate themselves to be rich or I whatever their fantasy is. I think they're trying to cover up the food. No, 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 I no, can't no. imagine. It's emotional. It's emotional. Okay. People eat for emotional reasons. Okay, mm. feelings. Yeah, they, they want something to crunch on to get rid of frustration. They mm -hmm. chew. You mm -hmm. see, some creamy food is a, is a lack of nurturing. Mm -hmm. People want creamy food because they want nurturing. Mm -hmm. The junk food industry knows that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they say black people are so confused, I'm going to put the sugar and the salt and the creamy food together. <laughs> and, the and, they, and they call it a candy bar. 
There is a popcorn that mm -hmm. has sugar and salt in oh, it. Oh, yes. I got it by mistake, and I took it. it I does. thought something was wrong with no, it. No, no, I no. took it back to the store. I said, this, no. something is wrong with this, and no, I no, gave no, it back goodness. to them. No, they're covering the, the emotional addiction that people have. Okay. They know black people are angry about themselves. They love mm -hmm. themselves, but they hate themselves because they love themselves, so they need sugar and salt. Okay. So they're, they're just being man emotionally manipulated. McDonald's has never taught anyone about vitamin A and vitamin C. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the game is emotions. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's how they manipulate us emotionally. Without They know that we, we try to medicate ourselves. Why are we so gullible? Like Why are we so readily Because there's no culture attached to our food. The Chinese, if they come here, they're going to bring their own food. Right. So we are more gullible because we don't attach the Vietnamese, if they come here, they're going to bring it. They're mm -hmm. going to order their food because mm -hmm. they're still attached they're gonna to their They're going to have their own food. grocery stores. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have what they eat and what right. they identify Cause, with. Because culture is attached to food. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that culture attachment to our food, so mm -hmm. we're just vulnerable. We're buying Chinese food, Italian food. <laughs> yeah. Are there any nutritional causes for our anger and aggression? Uh, yes, yes, when, especially when you get low on the B vitamins, like um, yeah. from bleached white flour mm -hmm. and white rice. Mm -hmm. When you get low on that, you, you can actually get suicidal. Mm. And they want to keep you in this kind of state where you don't know whether you're going to move your leg or not in the morning or get out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you keep you in a fear state. Mm -hmm. So they generate that by stripping the nutrients out of the food. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like this. If you look at the factory, that makes like bleach white flour or mm -hmm. sugar cane. Mm -hmm. You send the whole sugar cane to the factory. Mm -hmm. The whole sugar cane. Mm -hmm. You send right. it to the factory. The factory has a machine that imitates your liver, mm -hmm. your pancreas, your small intestines, large intestines, and the factory processes or eats the food. Then the factory has a bowel movement that's oh, called nice. white sugar, which mm -hmm. is a white turd, bleach mm -hmm. white flour, which is another white turd. That's the in the processing. Mm -hmm. okay. A person knows that they eat an apple and it's fully processed apple is a bowel movement. Mm -hmm. Now if mm -hmm. you send the sugar mm -hmm. cane to the factory and it eats it for you, mm -hmm. then what's coming out is a turd. Mm -hmm. Because we're not attaching people to things mm -hmm. again. Because mm -hmm. all yeah. inventions mm -hmm. come from the human body. So if you look at an organism, right. if you look at the factory as though it is an organism, right. is. then you can see the process, the process. Right. from beginning to end. And right. that you're eating the eliminate the waste. The mm -hmm. waste. The waste mm -hmm. Which they say is a process. The They're mm -hmm. telling you what it is. Right. We're not listening the to them. Mm -hmm. At one point I remember reading, and this was when I first started to teach, Lake Erie was dead and Lake, mm -hmm. Lake Michigan was dying. And I said, how can a lake die? And right. the, the answer was that it can't support life. Exactly. And that's what it, what's meant by yeah. a dead lake. Well, now I'm reading that more than 44% of the Earth's water supply is dead in the lakes. Yeah. So yeah. that, you know, if, if water is needed to support life mm -hmm. and water sources are dying, can we be far behind? Mm. I think that as, as a black people are, are concerned, if something happens to us, the Arabs will go crazy and the Chinese will go crazy because we're the source of their income. We ain't going nowhere because okay. we're the source we're the of source everybody's of income. But if, they, if, if, the water is, if the water is so polluted... They're selling water made by machines now. You know, they're micro water, machine made water. You know, there, to add to that question, um, the big concern, and, I don't, and just to put it out there in the TV viewing audience, um, about um, amphibians. Now, where I live, you know, and I live yeah. in Kanki area, and uh, we have frogs in oh. our yard where you just step and the frogs are hopping. My brother-in-law caught a whole bunch of them once, put them in my bathtub, and I had a whole hopping full of, you know, frogs in my bathtub, and I'm screaming. <laughs> but anyway, um, they're so plentiful on a normal basis, but within two years, we found one frog last year and what? one frog so far this year. And that's within two years' time from a total population where you're stepping on them to nothing. Where did well, they I move? thought that that was a concern. That's I thought it was a local water. concern. That's, okay. that's but global. apparently there's a global, that's global. watch. Yeah. There is a global watch. Yeah. People, scientists are scared everywhere, running rampant because now the frogs are gone. They started showing up. Um, at first, they started showing up um, with all kinds of... Three legs, mm -hmm. right. stuff like that. That's, right, a lot of mutations yeah. and things mm -hmm. like that. And now they're t like 
disappeared. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. have an actual frog watch out, a mm -hmm. global frog watch. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And they're saying that the causes, they're not sure, they believe it may be pesticides. Oh, uh, I know what it is. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're running a lot of games yeah, with everybody you know, trying to, not to put a blame on us, one specific oh, thing yeah. yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but they yeah, have yeah. their, they have, yeah, they have their knowledge about it. Oh, yeah. But they're, um, but if that is opposing, people are like, well, if frogs, for God's sake, but if they're gone, then how close behind us is it that it's going to affect the problem that's ailing them is going to affect us, and or is already ailing us, mm -hmm. you know, on mm -hmm. a, or on a, a more subtle level that we don't recognize, mm -hmm. you know, yet. Mm -hmm. So um, the whole ecological balance yeah. will be thre it's yeah, being you, thrown off. Mm -hmm. Right. They judge the, they judge the water so by, by what's on. happening to the frogs, but we we have to keep that in mind that they make money off of destruction. A man wrote mm -hmm. a book called Destruction of Black Civilization. That's true. Oh, yes, they yes. make money off of destruction. Don't mm -hmm. think that they were, yes. if, the waters, mm -hmm. if the waters messed up, mm -hmm. they make it money. Oh. Mm -hmm. Destruction <laughs> makes money for them. Mm -hmm. They destroy Africa, they make money. Crime pays. Yeah, crime crime pays. They got mm -hmm. kind of concern like that. You, we're putting morality with a group of people that don't have Oh, I'm have not it putting there. it over yeah. there. I'm talking right. about us. No, I'm talking about I'm us. I'm about the human yeah. beings on the planet mm -hmm. oh, yeah. who want to be human and who want to have human children to remain human. <laughs> Without five legs. <laughs> right. Doctor, 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 peace. Now, you're talking about people that are culturally homeless. Mm -hmm. We are culturally you're homeless. You're culturally homeless. Once you start being concerned about all of that, about your culture, about the growth and development of your children, you're going to alienate yourself from the no-grows. I mean, the Negroes, as they're called. Okay. Uh, because you... you you become culturally homeless, and people get lonely that try to eat health food because they can't socialize with their friends anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole lot of loneliness that caused people to go back into the junk food mm. to, to get away from their culture and go back into the. It's the loneliness of not having the the, uh, the, the you know the, the relatives mm -hmm. that don't want them around. You oh here they come again with them sprouts, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, they, you get so well, much. Well, you know, protection. you you sort of <clears throat> kind of get. Um, you kind of get um, a, a sense of being, uh, of, of having your, your beliefs and your practices um, you, you disrespected. Mm -hmm. yeah. For example, it has been known for quite a while that, you know, I don't eat flesh. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've long since stopped trying to tell other folks what they can do and not do mm -hmm. because they don't listen. So, but at any rate, when people invite me to dinner yeah. and they know this, I expect them to offer something to me that I can consume. Now, maybe they're not going to make a whole meal right. just, yeah. to, but just for me. Something. But <clears throat> don't tell me how I can take the meat out of the greens. Yeah, that's don't, don't tell me I can. Yeah, yeah, don't tell me I can push <laughs> this aside. Right, right, right. You right. know, and yeah. and eat the rest of this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. just out of <laughs> deference to the fact that I'm a guest in your home, please offer me something exactly. that. I, so I have developed a, a way of sort of not offending folk and not letting folk offend me by saying, oh, I'm fasting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, oh, I'm not eating, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so that folks are not thinking that I'm looking down their nose, mm -hmm. my nose at what they're eating. But you see, the thing, the, the thing that I have noticed is that people thumb the, their noses at a good diet mm -hmm. until they get sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when mm -hmm. they And then when questions. they get sick, yeah, I get yeah. phone calls from people all yeah. the time oh, wanting to know what that's can right. they do because yes. they got this happening and that happening. And yes. I always refer them to somebody yes. who can give them some information. I always, there are always books that I recommend that people read mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. because I believe a lot in two things. One is do for self. Mm -hmm. The other one is be in a partnership when somebody is looking out for your interests. Right. You join in. Mm -hmm. You don't just turn yourself over to somebody to take care of you as though you are a child and cannot participate in that. Mm -hmm. And so I expect for people to try to inform themselves. The library is filled with information. Mm -hmm. information. You know, and now folks can sit in their house and look on a computer Easily. and get a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But there are certain basic things, there are some common sense things that you could know. You know, yeah, right, right, you right. could know that if you eat something, it makes you sick 
probably you have no tolerance for that. You could know that if you eat something and several days later you have not seen it leave your body, Something's that probably right. you're yeah. not processing that. That's right. You know? Mm -hmm. So they, you don't need a whole lot of information. Most of the time, constipation will tell you that you have eaten something that you don't have the enzymes to digest. Mm -hmm. You don't, you're not able to process it. It isn't able to leave on its own, you right. know? And you go into a drugstore and look at the word drugstore. Yeah. You go in a drugstore and a majority of the aisle is devoted to digestive aids. Yeah. People have to have everything for flatulence and for gas and for constipation and for mm -hmm. all kinds. Yes, reflux, everything. Does that tell you something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, when a roll of toilet paper is a year's supply, you, you really pretty much know you, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> 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 pretty much know that. <laughs> But basic things like drinking six to eight glasses of water mm -hmm. a day, clean water, I'm mm -hmm. not talking about public water, because mm -hmm. that has ammonia right. in it and bleach and mm -hmm. arsenic and mm -hmm. things that people don't think of. So drinking water mm -hmm. and exercising sure. and eating fresh fruits and vegetables that has the fiber that can exercise mm -hmm. your insides. Mm -hmm. And that can basic. actually leave your body on its own. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Without coaching. You know. <laughs> 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 you know. <laughs> But I always contend that uh, a person that eats junk food, um, that's, they have been seasoned to do that. Mm -hmm. They just didn't wake up and say, I'm going to kill myself with food. Mm -hmm. They've been carefully taught to eat this food. Mm -hmm. And so we have to carefully unteach them to eat the mm -hmm. food. And they yeah. can't rush the facts. People say, what do you eat? You know, yeah, like, you where know, do you come from? What planet? Uh, uh, <laughs> what do you have for fun? Yeah. You know, well, and it, it's just a matter of extending the, and the information to them. I mean, um, you know, my daughter, she started eating when she started eating cheese the first thing she started getting was constipation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now she realizes, and she'll say, I'm not, I'm not eating that anymore for a yeah. while. You know, and I know it'll be for a while, but mm -hmm. at least she mm -hmm. recognizes yes. mm -hmm. yeah. that, you know, that has a direct correlation between how she's eliminating. Mm -hmm. And she knows her limit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. But we need to educate our children and ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, on those simple things, being able to just listen and, 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 and to... Uh, admire and respect the body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where and what it's telling us mm -hmm. you know yeah. better than we do our cars what the elimination is telling us exactly because you How know people it? don't yeah. i'm not suggesting that you know people get obscene about this thing mm -hmm. if you have children in your house you should see their elimination it should yes yeah. you Watch should know you should know if someone asks you did your child have a bowel movement you should right. know you yes should know. or exactly. no you know mm -hmm. You should know when the child begins to have uh, the symptoms of a cold yes. that there's probably a mu mucus buildup exactly. here. And that the first thing you need to do is open that child up mm -hmm. and get those bowels mm -hmm. moving and, you know, and, and, and start trying to remove some of that mucus in the right. system so the so-called cold can go with it. Right. So there are some things that that uh, yes. that have to do with respect to it's elimination. Possible. I think respect. most people have not, not ever seen a normal elimination mm -hmm. since they've been adults. When they were children, they probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. didn't really pay any attention. But I remember when I went to, when the National Health Federation used to have its, its conference here uh, every year, and they haven't had one here in a while. But they, they, they had people talking about elimination and what you should expect to see. And I was amazed mm -hmm. because I hadn't known anything about things having length. <laughs> and, you know, and things being unbroken, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. stool uh -huh. having length and, and being unbroken uh -huh. and having circumference and all of that, you know, uh -huh. uh, as being something that indicates something and, and something you, it ought to be a standard. Uh -huh. yeah. you, uh -huh. you know, you ought to want a certain kind of elimination. You ought right. to want to know that when you put something in here, right. that when you see it again, it's not only are you going to see it again soon, but you're going to see it again in a form that says that it is going through a healthy colon. Exactly. You know. Right. Or if you have to take a book into the bathroom and or wait. the newspaper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody out there who has to have, you know, magazines and everything in the bathroom, mm -hmm. excuse mm -hmm. me, you're constipated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you should elevate you should your feet. Take get a phone book or something to elevate your feet up mm -hmm. so you get the proper mm -hmm. pressure mm -hmm. on right. your And then, of course, exactly. the importance of exercise, which, yeah. of course, 
You know, people have very busy lives, mm -hmm. and I know people fall out of bed running to get to work, oh, exactly. you know, and they come to work and they're sitting at desks or they're sitting at computers and what have you, and then yeah. they're, even many people eat lunch at their mm -hmm. desk, and then they're coming home, you know, and they're, they get at home and they have, have uh, they you know, things to television. do yeah. to prepare <laughs> for the following day, and so right. they... People think they owe it to themselves to treat themselves with this relaxation called sitting down, resting, you know, watching TV, you know, having whatever, whatever. But the thing is that you need to seek a way to have some time to do normal things. Normal things? You need time. I demand time for thinking. Exactly. You know, people say D you didn't have to work or you're not at work or you did, you're not... I need about an hour to just sit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I need two. Yeah. You need time. That's right. you, you have it. You need it. You need time not to have a television playing in your ear, sure. not to be in a phone conversation, not to be in a conversation with somebody else. You need some time just to yourself. You'd be surprised at what messages you will get at what things will be resolved while you're just sitting there not yeah. trying to resolve anything, sure. you Go know? in the closets, anywhere. Yeah, but it's, it's, yeah. Uh, it's increasingly difficult. The uh, addiction, the chemical mm -hmm. addiction people have with the food, mm -hmm. then the radiation addiction, which we're not focusing on, that's mm -hmm. what you call a barcode, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where they get people addicted to the radiation of the food, and therefore they buy all the products made by this company because they had the similar radiation on all their products. Mm -hmm. This is like a person who looks at TV and they sleep. What are you saying to me? Yeah. Radiation. I'm, I'm talking about a person looking at TV. They sleep. The TV's on. You turn it off. They wake up. Right. That's radiation right. addiction. Okay. So they yeah. radiate food to get you addicted to the radiation of their products. Isn't okay. That yes. Okay. And that people are addicted to the radiation of the cell phone, the radiation of the television, the okay. radiation of the food. Okay. This is a mm -hmm. total plantation. Okay. Just on different levels, but it's the same system as we that's, mentioned before with the boys. It's the same system. That's like when you have to, like, uh, you know, so you have to have the radio on to go right. to sleep. Right. Or yes. that fan. Right. When, you know, the fan and right. have that sound right. going on. Mm. And I know, listen, I know Addiction. a couple the white noise. that actually, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. actually had this dispute. They were newlyweds. The one wanted the TV on. Uh -huh. The other one wanted on the fan, wanted the fan on, uh -huh. <laughs> but neither one of them wanted both of them on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, they finally could not agree about this. So the husband started to sleep in another room. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness. The wife is sleeping in in the bedroom with the with the TV on. The husband is sleeping in the den with the fan on. Because they would not, not one night, that would they give up these things that they, they that they were. And the wife said, well, all he has to do, I always fall asleep. So all he has to do is just turn off the television uh -huh. when I fall asleep, you know. It's the addiction. But I don't want that fan over my head, it's the you addiction. know. Mm -mm. So it, it, I said, now, when a TV and a fan about to separate newlyweds, <laughs> it's the addiction. It is time for us to go to counseling. It's Something's an addiction. It's, that's what you got to see. Yeah, it it is an addiction. addiction. Those that's things are addiction. calibrated to make a certain sound. That, They're yeah. not accidentally making that's, it hum. It's a mm. lack of nurturing and love from their mother. They're imitating the sound of the mother. The womb. Okay. They okay. calibrate those things. Okay. This, this is well planned. It's nothing that happens by accident. That's what Roosevelt said in 1934 okay. in America. Nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they kept, they, they're doing it quite thorough. You just oh, have to walk calculated. away from this thing. You have to say, I'm going to walk away from this junk food. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna take control that's, of my life. But see, mm. now that's where the fasting comes in. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. because one of the good things, one of the reasons for fasting is to say, I am in charge of this that's vehicle. Right. That's right. This is my body, that's and right. I will put it under my command. Mm -hmm. And if I say I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to eat, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to crave, I'm not right. going to whine and cry right. and tell you my story. Right. I am just not going to right. do it. Right. That's right. Because you will never have strength mm -hmm. if that's you right. allow weakness to be predominant in your body. So that's you right. have to put your body into submission. Mm -hmm.
you see mm -hmm. and so how you how are you going to walk away from anything if you can't walk away from a meal and very often when you're not even hungry people exactly. eat because eat, it's, eat. Can't walk it's away 12 o'clock I mean, you know right. you can't walk away from chewing them. 10 30 11 there are fast food places that are open at one o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning and there are cars Sure. In the drive, what are what on earth are you doing up at one o'clock? Folks say, "Well, I work nights. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the yeah, only the time addiction. I have to eat." But I'm telling you, not everybody is working at night. Uh, no, that's you know, addiction. a lot of people no. are addiction. eating at at hours of the night when the food cannot be processed because the body has shut down for the evening. Yes. It isn't going to do any more work. Right. Yeah. So that food is just going to sit there. In the old, well, back in the day, I mean, supper, you, you know, dinner used to be in the day. 12 o'clock in the day, right. In the day. And supper and would be... And then after that, supper was around 5, five and that was the o'clock. snack. <laughs> or mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. light food, the mm -hmm. main yeah. course, mm -hmm. the biggest, heaviest food was around noon. Right. Yeah, and you get up, right. finish working, and you're working right. a lot of that mm -hmm. off. And then you have something light to stack on around five or six, and then mm -hmm. it's time to go to bed. Right. And then but, in the morning you yeah. break the fast. And you break the fast. Because you haven't right. been eating all exactly. night long. All night long. We've completely changed our Folks habits. Folks have an eating disorder, which we yes. call it. Addiction to food. They have an eating disorder, bona fide mental illness. That's what it's classified as. Okay. A eating disorder. They eat all day and they have problems sleeping, so they get up and eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's an eating disorder. They have food in their pocket, food in the glove compartment of the car, mm -hmm. food in their desk, food everywhere. They mm -hmm. have an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. they, they're searching for something that's empty inside of themselves. And the funny thing is, a lot of people like to feed you. You know, I think because they want company. Oh, yeah, addicts you know, want so some company. If they, they a drug party. if they, if they, yeah. you know, they want to give yeah. you some candy. They you know, drug party. Don't you you go to the dress? bank with a child, they want to yeah. get a child some candy. Uh, a drug party. You know, you go to the doctor, they want to give the child some all candy. The no. You know, they want to pass it. off the, all this stuff, yeah. sure. you know, to you. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Aff, I have a couple of questions to ask you. Um, well, I mean, out of all these things, what do you think is the biggest issue plaguing um, African Americans? I mean, we have so many ills you know that we're uh, we're facing but mm, as far as diseases go well I like I mean yeah that would be fibroid tumors and prostate disease yeah. uh, fibroids in the women and prostate, prostate in the with, men. With, with the men the that's the highest right. diseases that we have yes and that's uh, it's an epidemic all over the world everywhere I go anyway Jamaica Trinidad Barbados why I go England I mm -hmm. mean that's Epidemic. Do you think it's that we have, a, I guess, a, a spiritual illness, the reason why we, um, I mean, I, I'm traveling so much, especially in this country, mm -hmm. that African Americans can't seem to really get that connectedness back to the food, true I, food? I think it's uh, spiritual and I think it's cultural because mm -hmm. to practice our culture is to be spiritual. Mm -hmm. I don't think... Uh, I don't think we have that connection, cultural attachment to our food, which would bring the spirituality, which would bring ma'at, which would bring all of these other things that go with it. Mm -hmm. And so we have a high amount of diabetes all over the world. We're on dialysis, kidney failure because and of that all sugar. Over the world. That's all over the world. That's because mm -hmm. of that sugar, uh, our inability to love ourselves or love someone who looks like ourselves. So we medicate that with sugar. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we get into the salt, and then we get into the hormones and steroids and the meat and the eggs and the dairy, which causes fibroid tumors and prostate disease. Mm. And, of course, we get into the uh, deodorants, synthetic deodorants, and cough suppressants that suppress waste in the uterus and prostate. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if you're tense and stressed, you get tension and stress in your uterus and prostate. Of course, everyone's going to say, how is the deodorant le related to, you know, the tension in the, in the uterus oh, and the, or the well, prostate well, area? It's, it's, it's <laughs> the, 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 the deodorant has a chemical in it that suppresses waste in your system. That's mm -hmm. why they call it antiprespirant. It press, keeps the waste in the system. Mm -hmm. So when you put it on your skin, it gets into the blood. So you're actually eating the deodorant. And then it, it gets in the blood and suppresses the waste in the uterus and prostate. And I want to add to that because I have some knowledge that it seals off the pores mm -hmm. right. so that waste that would be excreted through the skin right. is trapped inside. It, has to it go putrefies. Right. 
and then it, any putrefaction is likely to lead to inflammation, mm -hmm. and inflammation therefore, you know, goes on to become all mm -hmm. kinds of other things like mm -hmm. abscess and other kinds of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So all you got to do is stop the body from performing its natural functions, mm -hmm. and you're going to create a problem. And with the antiperspirants, that's could, one of the things yeah. that happens. And the cough mm -hmm. suppressants, synthetic ones. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about herbal remedies. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about synthetic ones, suppress waste. That's why they right. call it cough suppressant. You want to expectorate. You yeah, want to. That's what God is you doing. You want to cough yeah. it all You out. want to God get waste to out. You. Right. right. The idea out. is not to, to do the other the way around, right. not to put waste in, mm -hmm. yeah. but to get waste that, out. That's, but right. that, that's, that's not profitable. To be healthy, no one can make money off of you. Mm -hmm. To be African, no one can make money off of you. Mm -hmm. To be healthy, no one can make money off of you. The objective is to make you sick. We call it a disease industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to make people sick. And in my business, which I'm a health practitioner, the, the, mm -hmm. the biggest game out here is women. You have to make the women sick to make money. Mm -hmm. If you get one black woman depressed, upset because the child's in special ed, she's going to give more money to the church. The criminal justice system will get more money. She's going to eat more sugar. Mm -hmm. She's going to get the, the nails from the, uh, the claws from the Koreans. The claws. Uh, so it, the objective is to make one dysfunctional black woman, and everybody's making money. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, we hope we have shed some light on some things that uh, interest you, and certainly we couldn't do it in an hour's time in this in this show but we do rec highly recommend this book African Holistic Health by Dr. Laila O Africa and we also recommend the book Nutricide these ought to be in your library must, this is also pass. by Dr. Laila O Africa someone mm -hmm. has called him the George Washington Carver of nutrition and yeah. I would say right on to That's that right. And these books are well worth using, not only as references, but also as means of finding out what went wrong and what to do about it. I mean, he has undertaken, you know, he undertook to talk about all kinds of things, including sex and, and sexual practices, uh, disciplining children, <laughs> um, things that you normally don't expect to find mm -hmm. in a book on health and nutrition. I found in this book and pick it up at a bookstore at a library and look at the table of contents or look at the indices and you will find that you have got everything you need. He's talking about self-diagnosis, uh, holistic sex laws. Did you know there were laws governing sexual performances <laughs> and it didn't have anything to do with pedophilia, which is, I didn't bring it up, Dr. Africa, because mm. we got a yes. very short so time, <laughs> and I, 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 but we no. will be having yeah. you back very soon, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, we, and we'll undoubtedly have to, have to talk about this, this epidemic, because we are victimized by a great many things, yes. and our children are victimized right under our noses, exactly. mm -hmm. and we don't seem to know what to do about it. We don't seem to know how to protect protect our own children, and we don't seem to understand abuse unless it's blatant, right. unless it's right out in your face abuse, you know, like somebody knocks you down on the ground <laughs> and stomps you, mm -hmm. or shoots you six times with bullets, mm -hmm. then we understand abuse. But if people are abusing you by de-educating you, by depriving you of your culture, they call but, it genocide. Geneva Convention defines that as genocide. Yeah, mm -hmm. ge genocide is, yes. is, is subtle mm -hmm. in its earliest stages. It gets overt when it is too late, kind of right. like talking about the frogs. You say when you put a frog, right. if you have a frog in a pot of cold water, it might remain there. Mm -hmm. And as you heat the water up, you know, the frog doesn't notice the subtle change in temperature, and by the time it does, it's it can't move. can't move. And so we hope that we have shed some light. We hope you'll join us again on Fridays at 8.30, repeat on Sundays at 3.30. This is OmniU Presents, the H3O Art of Life show, and we have had co-hosts Johari Cole. Doctor. Dr. <laughs> Johari Cole, that's right. We have to remember that. And Dr. Laila O. Africa. And, of course, your host, your co-host and producer, Dr. Gloria Lattimore-Peace. Hotep.